I wrote Angelica as the music for a film made by Christopher Mason and Paul O'Dell on the subject of Angelica Garnet. Angelica had been a string player at one time and Paul asked me if I would set it for solo cello. Having discovered a really fine cellist, I decided it would be more interesting to make this piece for Angelica and another piece that I'd already written for another film uh, into an extended suite for solo cello. Tempo. <laughs> Side. I was too fast. It, it, could, it could be a little slower. The other piece I'd already written was based on Joanna Carrington, the painter. It had started off life as a song. The words were written by Christopher Mason, who was married to Joanna. And put the A sharp at the bottom there. Did you hear me find the A sharp? Yes. Then go for the top D, so it sounds something like. Now, it may not be the effect you want. Um, then I tried to find a middle note. Yes. And it's not B flat major, is it? No. No. The melody is. Is the D. Is, the, is that. Oh, you want no. the A sharp? It's the melody is really the A sharp. Now you've said a clever thing. Wonder, if you put the D at the bottom, uh -huh. then it's fine. Just right? listen. Uh -huh. about Christopher, uh, about an exhibition, and in it Christopher talks really quite poignantly about Joanna, and Paul wanted something to, to some music underneath this, and I took some of the themes from For Joanna and put them on a solo cello, and that has since become Energy Joanna. This bit I think is the best piece of writing in this piece. When you get here, also getting rather excited. Yes, oh yes, it's meant to do that. Yes. <laughs> would write me some words, possibly about Joanna, who had died a, a year or so before. Well, there's, there's one part in it where Christopher talks about, with each grey dawn, time steals a shiver more, and that became quite, in, quite important in the song. <laughs> Um, in in the cello part becomes this. I'm going to play all this in the C string. So almost, is this a yes. change of mood down here? It is here? a completely change of mood. This is about time marching on. Okay. Which is why it's got these repeated G's. But this is a... Well... Yes. Um, it's no. I'm pulling the tempo. Can you see that a bit more? I'm well, trying to find a sort of... A, com a parlendo. Yes, uh, yes. It's rubato, yeah. really. You Rubat. do. I'm doing more than I was doing. I mean, I'm yes. And it needs that. Just to try and make um, make the story yes, clearer yes, somehow. Yes, exactly. Uh, you look, in 37... Mm. I pulled the bottom seat. Now, now 57. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you've written... Yes. Or 
Do you want to be like a key to see again? Yeah. It's like I just touch it. Yes, I think we keep on the like ears. Yes. yes, it's almost it's almost a quaver there, isn't it? The C the just go down and catch yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. solo cello was going to comprise five movements based on artists who were friends. Angelica had already been recorded and the one that would become the very first movement in the suite was based on Christopher Mason. Let's see what we've got to say. Latter-day Renaissance man, I suppose. He he writes. Um, he's written a novel. Uh, he writes poetry. Uh, has been a film director. He paints. And that on bar uh, number twenty. Well, I've got P with a crescendo. Yeah, and then so take the P out. He'd keep it at, at what you had was, which was more or less M P and just. I start at the same volume. Yeah. He's also a rather mercurial type of character, very strong character, with little sort of idiosyncratic things he does, which which you can say, and friends, other friends have said, oh yes, that's Christopher. <laughs> He does a lot of bluffing, I think, Christopher, and so there's quite a lot of bluffing going on in this piece. A, a lot of changes, um, a, a, a central sort of, almost a cadenza type, where you feel he's feeling his way and doesn't really know where he is, which is, I think, what happened after Joanna died. And he decided to take up painting again, which he hadn't done when Joanna was alive in the latter years. And he very much was feeling his way. There aren't any bar lines, but there are indications of, oh, I see. of oh, barring oh, three oh, and four okay. and five. But you... I think that's the true heart of Christopher in that bar. Yes. Okay. That's what it feels like to me in the music. Really? They've had to find a, a central moment, sort of where all his pretense and dancing it's and stamping and doing something sort of good and clean and actually very sensitive and all those things one knows. Got it. Well, that's so interesting. Thank you for that, because that's. So back to bar. David considered these two bars to be the heart of Christopher. They're also part of the elegy for Joanna, which is really a reflection of Christopher's feelings for his wife. So an integral part of Christopher himself, his heart, is linked musically to the heart of Joanna. <laughs> You 
you see we've got a problem with dynamics as well here. What am yeah. I doing? Am I crescendoing? Is it a sort of thrown away ending? Because of, well, I'm doing this sort of mezzo. How about if you, if you, not a whole round and tandem, a slight a slowdown. Sense of it, yes. Come to a, a pause there. On that chord, yeah. And then just throw away the ending. Yep. And forte. Yep. Yes. Yes. Do you want it quicker? Yeah, do you want to I throw don't, away? I in music has largely to be based on your own, the composer's own personal view of the person, which is not necessarily indicative of how other people see them. So to begin with it's extremely personal and a lot of a lot of the work happens before you even start to put pen to manuscript paper. Um, I suppose themes suggest themselves to you the more you think of the person and the more you think of their work. Quarter's Wheel is, is for a friend, Richard Edwards. Um, and I decided that this would be called Potter's Wheel because that would give me a form. It would give me a rondo or a, a moto perpetuo even. And I played around for some time with the idea of calling it round O because that's an old English term for rondo. Um, Rondo being a piece of music that repeats, comes back. And the motor perpetuo was the idea of the potter's wheel turning and turning. Now, can I talk to you about a couple of things? Yes. I like that speed. I'll be not having a nervous breakdown. I like that speed. speed. It's almost one in a bar. It's a sort of fluid. I would say, when I started learning, I went bloody oh, hell, just so no, hard because I was going like no, crazy now. No. Like this wheel was going. Yeah, which it doesn't, of course. It's... Um, so that's a nice. Now, the yeah. other thing, if I can remember to do it and try and do it, was in, when it's motor perpetual and it's turning, I was going to do a little bit, I was going to try and do a little bit of salt ponticello. So yes. playing on the bridge. So, no, let me just stop talking and let me tell you what I've got. Okay. It's sort of slidey sound. Yes, Is that yes, bothering yes. you? No, it's not at all. No, so because... this will start. Yes, it's sort of a warming up sort of thing. It's sort of slightly mysterious. It's, it's, it's slightly, slightly, slightly distant. Yes. It's not. It, it could be this. But of course, that's not all that a potter does, a ceramicist does. It's, it's a, a creative process that happens first in the mind, um, like all other creative processes. And therefore, there have to be some different contrasting parts that are rather more contemplative. OK. Right, so we've got two, somehow or another, bar 41. You're going to have to help me. Same tempo, yeah? Yes. I'm all right now. Yes, it's... Yes, I... I think there's something going on there which I see going on in Richard. You've had this journey, this wheel, it's all, you know, going on, and suddenly some of his work is completely off the wall. There are yes. strange things about yeah. his work, which a lot of people don't like. Yes. What, what are those wings doing on? <laughs> there's Egyptian service, people doing it. Yes, exactly. Not just straight. This is quirky, this bit. 
I mean, it's sort of quirky. I mean, as you're, if you're describing quirky, this is quirky. It is quirky, yes. I just don't know if it's right. I just don't get it across quite at the same. Word, you know, you know, you know, the same speed. It could be a bit more contemplative, perhaps. Maybe. So we just come down. Relax. So, of course, the personality of the person that you're writing about has to come in too. And um, Richard has had his stormy moments, his, his rather unhappy moments, obviously, as we all do. So there's an element of that in, in Potter's Wheel as well. That's right. Right. The fifth piece is called Landscapes and it's based on a landscape artist um, to whom I happen to be married, uh, Paul O'Dell. And it started off as a really cumbersome piece of music. I think I was probably trying too hard to get everything in that I know and love about Paul. And it, it was some six minutes long originally and uh, had so many different conflicting elements in it that I had to take a pencil to the whole manuscript and score out huge sections of it. It, it was some 250 bars to begin with. Now, can, I, can I stop you? Because now I've taken away the Allegro. There is a problem if it's as slow as that. Now I see your point. Uh, that was quite was a very steady tempo. Wasn't it was. It? I think it could go. I don't think it would, you know, detract from anything. But I would suppose what I'm trying to find is what, what the essence of it. But rubato is fine. <laughs> Um, and here, I suppose, because it's written about somebody I, that I live with and know very well, and it, it's possibly more about him and his personality than his work, although I have tried to get an element of landscape into it. But of course, why Paul paints landscapes is partly to do with where we live, in France and the fact that he loves being here. So his love for the countryside, which is shown in his beautiful pictures, and my love for him, have become integrated into this piece called Landscapes. This is where the voice has been. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I think that's better. That's better. And then you if it's more Then we're there. Then you've got an A at the bottom. A. A at the bottom. A at the bottom. E and then in the, the middle. E where it is. And then and the C sharp. sharp. So it's just but in the bass curve. Yeah. Which is a nice a nice chord for the cello to play. So I've been extremely lucky in that David has has been willing to work with me after I've written the music to suggest certain ways of playing the music. Not you see this phrase here, I'm on bar 63. <laughs> but this was very interesting moment for Con Amore. Now what does Miriam mean I'm sitting here? Now it can mean two things to me, I thought. You've written it with love. Yes. 
or is to be played with love? Well, both those things. Okay, got it. If, if, if that's all right with you. He does suggest ways of playing it that perhaps I'm not aware of the difference between uh, the way I've written it and the way he has suggested playing it, which usually is playing it nearer the bridge, playing it in harmonics or, or, uh, or, or staccato, or those sort of effects, not actually changing the notes. Uh, that second, let's say the second bar of Colin Moore. Is this the end of the phrase? Yeah, well, this is a difficulty always. Is this a new phrase? Yeah. See how I played it. It seems to me that it's going to the yeah. first beat of the yes, bar all the You're time. Right. Yes. That's a very difficult question to answer always for anyone who's created anything. Are they ever pleased with what they've created? I'm as pleased, I suppose, as I can be, and I'm extremely pleased with David's performance of my work. But every time I listen to it, I think, oh, I could have done something different. Thank you for that. Flopping hair about. Mm -hmm.